And from Thursday, get our flavour-packed yellow onions. Were 59 cent, now just 49 cent. And don't forget, we check out our competitors' prices weekly. So when you check out, you always get better value. The big 2020 save from Lidl. More for you. Rugby on Off The Ball. With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in. All right, you're welcome back. Let's go over to Portugal because Rory O'Connor of the Irish Independent is on the line. Evening, Rory. Hey, Nathan. How's it going? Very well. So the Ireland team over in Portugal for a few days for a warm weather training camp and Andy Farrell has named his first 23 uh, a couple of days earlier than Joe Smith used goal, giving us plenty of time to chat about it and pick through it. Uh, the big stories, I guess, in a way, there's only two changes from the first Joe Schmidt side at the World Cup for the game against Scotland. Quaylen Doris comes in at number eight. Rob Herring replaces uh, the retired Rory Best. So Peter O'Mahony is the only player who's actually dropped from the side. But the big talking point, I guess, is that Conor Murray is selected ahead of the informed John Cooney. There seemed to be a sense over the weekend that this was going to be the selection. It, is... Is that based on the body of work from Conor Murray over the last decade? Is it based on the performance against the Ospreys where he ended the game as man of the match? Was there any real insight from Andy Farrell as to what was his reasoning? I think there's just a huge amount of trust and faith in Conor Murray from the coaching staff. And, and while John Cooney has been superb this season and, and Farrell acknowledged that, they still think that Murray and Sexton is the best partnership for Ireland and, and are, are yet to be persuaded of otherwise. And there's kind of been a small uptick in Conor Murray's performances in the last couple of weeks. He certainly has shown signs of, of improvement. Um, and also, Cooney probably hasn't been quite as on fire in the last couple of weeks. It's kind of made that decision a little bit easier for them. It wasn't a popular call. I think if Andy Farrell was looking to you know, get the fans on side, I think, well, certainly judging by my social media today, um, he would have, you know, John Cooney was a fairly easy way of going. But I suppose his job is not to be popular. His job is not to curry favour with everyone. It's to pick the team that he thinks can beat Scotland. Um, I know it's only two changes from the Scotland game, but it is five changes from the New Zealand game. Um, so Keith Earls isn't, you know, wasn't fit to train, so he's he he wasn't considered for selection. But Robbie Henshaw, I think, you know, as well as Peter Mann, he drops to the bench, you know, will be pretty unhappy with that decision. And um, Bundyaki getting the nod there after being suspended for the game. And then he got Jordan Armour at fullback and uh, Conway in the wing. So, it's, yeah, it's a couple of changes. I think it's it's not enough to kind of give a sense that it's a full renewal after the World Cup. Mm. But it was probably unrealistic to expect him to go into his first Six Nations games, you know, with 10 changes or something like that. I guess there has to be some continuity Um because you know he has he wants to get a winning start under his belt. He needs to get some momentum behind him, because you know he is associated with the old regime as well. Yeah, I guess there was so much focus on Cooney because of his form, and maybe that was seen as a selection as to whether it was going to be some new era yeah. of very much selecting players on form. I just want to play a clip of Ron Nogara. He was talking to Jaron on OTBAM this morning, and he gave his thoughts on John Cooney's selection on the bench. Also, what's interesting too is that the game has changed, and I think even more so in, in the last few months. And the fact that the, uh, getting fixated on one to fifteen is probably the wrong thing to do. It's a twenty-three mm -hmm. man game. You say, well, it always was, but it, more so no. I think coaches are picking teams about how they want to finish and finish strong as well. Um, obviously, uh, you say, well, you should have your strongest team starting, but not necessarily. And I'd use the example of you know, I mean, I think sometimes. Uh, Sean Cronin, when Sean Cronin finishes, the team is stronger because he's such an exceptional impact player. Um, so there are different ways, I suppose, of, of putting your team together. And from a backline point of view, if you have Cooney involved in your 23, do you carry a 10 sub in the fact that is he a goal kicking kind of number 10 option? Then you can have two outfield blacks, backs, which completely changes your dynamic in in, in in a squad, if so, for, if that's the case, you could have Bundy Akian and, um, you know, so if one of Larmer or Addison Conway. didn't start, yeah. you could have, yeah, exactly, you could have uh, a Cooney, an Aki, a Conway, or Cooney, an Aki, and Addison on the bench, which, um, you know, after 50 minutes of giving one picture to Scotland of an attacking threat, you put Bundyaki and Addison or Bundyaki and Conway into the mix and your analysis, you know, you, I think a lot of players take security in their preparation from defending, defending pictures during the week, but they wouldn't have seen any of those pictures of those 
three coming into a four four man attack so it opens all kinds of possibilities but that's uh, it's it, it, it's it, it's risky and it's always a dilemma for a coach kind of saying how can I maximise my, my bench but it becomes I think a little bit more uh, risk friendly when you have someone like Cooney in your squad Yeah ultimately he didn't go with that risk because Ross Byrne is named among the replacements Robbie Henshaw and John Cooney there as well so if there hasn't been a huge turnover in terms of playing staff then is this almost Andy Farrell putting out a message that the players weren't the problem at the World Cup. It was the style of play, and he can transform the style of play. Yeah, I think there's definitely a sense of um, that they're going to... like. There's just a different vibe around it this week, and I suppose that's always going to be the case when there is a new coach, even if he is part of the old regime, as was a couple of his assistants. There's definitely... I mean, there was music... There was little Nas was blaring out of speakers beside training uh, when they were doing their warm-ups today, which I don't think there was ever music before training in the old regime. There were throwing AFL balls, slitters, uh, footballs around... There's, there is a bit of a sense of, of, of fun that maybe wasn't there before. Um, obviously, like that goes out the window if they lose to Scotland the weekend. And, and this is all, you know, mm. you know it's, it's all speculation as to what's going on behind the scenes. Because I do remember that everything was really positive in the week that got hammered by New Zealand at the World Cup. And we, all, we almost got convinced that they were on the right track. So there is, you know, you can read too much into that sort of stuff. But yeah, there is a sense, talking to players today in the kind of after the team was named, that they are... There is, they are trying to move things on a little bit. And I think that the selection, although it's not groundbreaking across the board, I do think their back row with Doris at eight and Stander move at the six, does, he's, you know, Doris is more of a footballer. He's more of a heads-up player. Stander tends to run into brick walls an awful lot. Doris, you know, it's his first cap, so we can't expect too much. But I think we're going to be seeing Caelan Doris in that jersey for the next decade, pretty much. Um, and he is that footballing uh, number eight in the mould of, say, Kieran Reid or Jamie Heaslip. Um, you know, Jordan Larmer's selection at 15, we've seen him all season counter-attacking for Leinster, mm. his ability to play heads up when he gets the ball. Like under Joe Schmidt, I always, one of my frustrations with the old regime, even when they were winning, was that they never counter-attacked when the other team kicked the ball to them. They basically ran back into contact. And I think for all that Rob Carney got criticism, I think that was the plan. You know, that was what he was supposed to do. He either kicked it or he ran into contact and recycled it. I think Larmer will very much look to counter-attack. And that's you know, if you've got a back row that's more that's that's more of a ball playing linking back row, plus you've got a back three that are counter attacking, you've turned two little elements of, of what was a, a bit of a became a very predictable game plan into a bit of a strength. So I think they can't completely tear up the game plan because they've only had four training sessions together. But I do think we will see a little bit more heads up, a little bit more continuity. And Farrell said what he wants um to go back to is the kind of um, Ireland that he played against, you know, he, he wants Ireland to find their identity again in terms of being, you know, playing with unbelievable passion, and unbelievable commitment, and 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 winning the physical battles. Because too often in 2019, Ireland were bullied physically, and I think that's probably those little three or four little things with you know will be the things that he goes to at the start, and I think we'll see the kind of game plan evolve over the course of the year. Just before we leave the Murray selection then, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to him this week or get a sense of the vibe around him because he's had to put up for the last three months since the World Cup with everyone telling him that he's out of form, that he's no longer the best scrum half in the world and in fact he's no longer even the best scrum half in Ireland. From what you've seen of him over the last decade, does that put a good chip on his shoulder with a point to prove or is he someone who can be affected by that sort of criticism? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, he hasn't been up for media at all, uh, even for Munster. I think he might have done um, something with a Sunday paper that might I, I didn't see the interview, but it, he's been largely kept away from the media. Um, I mean, he's got to be aware of it. I mean, like it, it, for all the players say that they live in a bubble and don't see stuff. The, you know, the people, their families send them on WhatsApps with linking articles and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, you, they're all on social media, so they, they, they see their mentions. And, and he is... He's kind of taken over the mantle from Rob Kearney as the guy that everyone, the, the kind of, you know, the, the lightning rod for criticism, even though Ireland haven't played a game for World Cup. And it's it's probably a little bit unfor like, you know, unfair on him. I mean, no one's saying that Conor Murray should never play for Ireland again. They're just saying that, you know, that right now, right here and right now, John Cooney is, is the informed player. And the mess, one of the things that was a frustration in the World Cup was, I, I'm one of the downfalls of Ireland was that lads were being picked you know, regardless of how they performed and, mm. and the form was being ignored. Um, Cooney, sorry, Cooney's obviously has been a great form, scoring tries, big moments player. I think he will see more action. I went through his pit minutes from last year's Six Nations. He came off the bench in the first two games and got three minutes in each game. And then he got, I think, seven minutes in the third game, 
got 20 minutes against France and then got dropped for the last game against Wales. I mean, then he obviously never got a chance to impress before the World Cup because he wasn't selected for any of the one-up games. He was dropped before that. So I think we will see more of him in an impact role. I don't think Murray's going to be playing 77, 78 minutes this time around. But I do think that he'll have been affected. I think that his recent return to form is partly because he's, I'm sure he's, he's pretty annoyed about the commentary around mm. them. I think he feels he's got a point to prove to people. And, you know, maybe that gives him the kick up the backside that he maybe needed, that maybe dropping him wasn't necessary, that, you know, the the, the amount of negative publicity around them has, um, you know, he's, he, he feels like he has kicked him into gear. So he's also, Andy Farrell mentioned he had a rest around Christmas. That, that has done him good. I mean, these players have been on the go since June 16th. Um, which is a long time. I think they're seven months into this marathon season. So, like, you know, mentally that's got to be fatiguing as well of the, as dealing with the World Cup disappointment. So, it's the proof of being a pudding. If he comes out and plays really well on Saturday and Andy Farrell expects him to, you know, he was very positive about him, then, you know, there won't be the same clamour for Clooney's inclusion next week. Mm. If he slows things down, if he makes bad decisions, if his box kicks are off and Clooney comes in and scores a try or does really well off the bench, then it's all going to, you know, it's all going to roll into next week. And, you know, we used to love an out-half battle, you know, in this country, you know, Ward, uh, Ward and Campbell and Sexton and o- Sexton O'Gara. Um, but this number nine battle currently is the one that's catching people's imagination. And that's just, you know, people love talking about selection. A lot written during the week about the potential centre partnership because unlike Joe Schmidt, Andy Farrell had all five to choose from, all five fully fit. And like, this must be a big setback for Robbie Henshaw because like, this should be yeah. his time. He's 26, he's 40 caps. He should be number one, you would have thought, on that list. And to find himself out of the 15, only among the replacements, probably there because of his versatility, and he can go in at full back if needs be, if there's any sort of an issue with Larmer. Is this very much a form-related decision, or is it down to style of play? What's your thinking? I think, you know, Bundiaki has never let Ireland down. He's been, not that Robbie Henshaw is, but, you know, he's been one of those physical leaders for Ireland. He's uh, always produced big performances when he's been asked and he's always been fit and durable and turned up and I mean unbelievably uh, you know direct and um, wins collisions you know Farrell really wants te- the team to win collisions and I don't know if there's much between himself and Robbie Henshaw and I think he is in good form whereas Henshaw has come back from the World Cup and he's been good for Leinster but I don't think he's been a standout in that Leinster team and um, so I, you know, I'm not hugely surprised by that one I, I like I think a lot of people were expecting them to go for the 10, 12, 13 combination from, from Leinster. Um, and Ringrose is in sensational form. And I suppose his ability to, you know, he's, he's scoring tries for fun. He's making line breaks. Maybe he's taking some of the sheen off Henshaw and mm-hmm. Henshaw's actually doing good work. But Bundyak, he's been really good for Connacht recently. Um, he's a consistent presence in that Irish midfield. And, and maybe, you know, he's possibly been underestimated a little bit over the years. Um, he's always been, I think the fact that he's been fit and available, he's built up 23 caps in a pre, in a reasonably short period of time, whereas Henshaw's unfortunately had a really bad run of injuries since the 2015 World Cup, and you know his World Cup, this 2019 World Cup was disrupted due to injury as well. So I wasn't massively surprised by that one. I don't think it's a huge uh, one between them. I was surprised to see Henshaw named on the bench, but it turned out Addison has been in and out of training, that he hasn't been able to take full part. Right. You know, I think he's the perfect number 23 because he covers so many positions and he's a lovely footballer as well. Um, it'd be interesting to see if Henshaw get, does get pitched into the fullback because his last time out there <laughs> didn't go so well and he has said that he's not really interested in playing there again, but you know, I think you could throw in McCluskey, Farrell, or Henshaw, and they'd all do a pretty good job in that midfield. I think Farrell, Andy Farrell, has you know real proper depth. There's one position where really he has an awful lot of depth, and and whatever combination, maybe apart from Ringrose, because Ringrose is that just that little bit of class that you know in, in attacking sense. I think that you know Ireland are pretty strong at the centre, no matter what happens in the next couple of weeks. So Rob Herring gets the number two jersey first to stake a claim as the long-term replacement for Rory Best, Ronan Kelleher among the substitutes and I guess Kelleher being there means that Herring needs to take this chance while it is his first championship start he needs to start yeah. quickly yeah and I'd be worried about him um, he's a really good player around the park a really good tackler good mm. carrier um, very good at the breakdown I think he's a good scrummager as well although it's very hard to tell when you're looking at a scrum who's good and who's bad but I mean he's one of those guys that I think Greg Feek would have rated when he was here but Ulster's line-out has been pretty much the weakest point of their game over the last year and, and that's down to Rob Herring and Ian Henderson who both get the start and Henderson's one now that you know probably has escaped a lot of focus but didn't have a very good World Cup at all himself Stockdale wasn't great either so you know all the focus has been on Murray but there's a couple of players there who, who need to prove themselves and, and you know if 
I don't know how they're going to share the responsibility between Her- sorry Henderson and James Ryan in terms of calling, but Herring is 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 going into this game with with a fairly patchy uh, season behind them in, in in terms of the throwing, and I think a lot of that's been down to Henderson's calling as well. So there's a bit of a combination there. You remove Peter Romani from the equation, who's one of the best mm. lineup forwards around, and um, you know. Roman Keller is going to come onto the bench and he's likely to have Devin Toner and Peter Romani to aim at, whereas Caelan Doris is going up, I'd say, uh, for Herring. So it, I think that's tricky for him. And Scotland have done a number on Ireland's line out in the past. So um, Ireland's bad days under Joe Smith generally correlated with days when the line out didn't go too well. So I think it is that's one area of concern. Mm. I think Herring's a very good player and he's, he's got the ability to pull it off, but um, it's an area that they're going to have to nail. And do you fully expect that Henderson will call the line outs in this Six Nations? I don't know that for sure. It's, mm. it's, it's funny. Like is, 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 it a pos- is, is it a possibility that because they haven't given James Ryan the captaincy that they start giving him that responsibility? Yeah, I think they might do it together for a while, but it, I don't think James Ryan has done an awful lot of calling. I think it's something that he's he's still learning on, on the job. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, I could be wrong on that. He could be calling at the weekend, mm. but Henderson was the caller at the World Cup. Um, I guess he has that relationship with Rob Herring as well from Ulster, um, but it's something that he needs, to get, he needs to get better at if he's going to stay in this team because, you know, the World Cup didn't go particularly well for him and, and he's one of those, I think, with a point to prove this Saturday. You spoke at the start about the different atmosphere and all been a little bit more relaxed and maybe that sense of a new era and the shackles are off somewhat. In terms of what's happening on the pitch with the coaching setup, how hands-on is Andy Farrell? Like, who's taking the teams through the various drills from what you've been able to see? Well, yeah, we only we only get to see about like five minutes to start before we're like there was a lot of birdie security guards going around the the campus where they were training today, um, um so we, like what what we saw was a load of kind of skills drills being carried out by all the assistants and Farrell was kind of in the midst of it. He has said that he wants to remain a tracksuit coach that he that he wants to that coaching is his passion and that he feels he, he can best contribute to the the whole thing by by rolling up the sleeves and getting involved. But I think. At the same time, he's committed to delegate. I think he's committed to delegating a little bit more than Joe Schmidt did. So you know, Mike Cat will have a big influence, I mm. think, on, on the way the team attack. And I think Simon Eastby is a fairly influential voice in there now. He's been a part of the previous re- regime for a long time. But yeah, I think Farrell will be. You know, he was out in the middle of things today. He was in his kit. You know, I think he, he'll be more hands-on than say a, a Warren Gatlin, but probably less hands-on than Joe Schmidt, who was very hands-on when it came to the sessions. All this week on Off The Ball's Twitter page, we're giving you the chance to win jerseys, signed rugby balls and signed team photos. It's all with thanks to Vodafone Ireland. If you're one of the daily winners, you'll also be winning a chance of winning tickets to all of Ireland's home games in the Six Nations. Keep an eye on our Twitter page, at Off The Ball, for a chance to win. So, Rory, how much longer are they in Portugal for? They're gone, I think. Oh, they're yeah, gone. They had... What are you still yeah, doing they're... there, then? Mm. Uh, well, the flights, flights didn't work out. So oh, yeah, I hate, hate when that happens. Exactly, yeah. Um, I don't know, like it wasn't even that warm over here that I was a bit disappointing. Um, but yeah, no, they've gone back. They, they've got tomorrow off. They reassemble in Carton House on uh, when uh, tomorrow night. So they um, they still stay in Carton House, but they train out in Abbottstown now. They're kind of it's a bit weird. They're going to Carton House for one night. Yeah, they're staying for the for most of the tournament. They're in Carton House, but they're in Carton House this Thursday. Then they transfer to Shelburne, which they always do on a Thursday. So they train in. Um, Sorry, I feel like I'm giving every hotel in Ireland the plug here. They're they're um, training in um, the train in Abbottstown, then into town, into the Shelburne. This is mm. the usual rate, rate, uh, routine that they have, and for the rest of the tournament, they'll be back to um, close to normal. Albeit they're not training out in Kildare, they, they will be coming into Abbottstown to that new facility, which looks. I haven't been there yet, but it mm. looks pretty impressive. You relax yourself over there, Rory. Do my best. Thank you, Nathan. All right, good stuff, Roy O'Connor there on Andy Farrell's first Irish team. Lots more analysis to come in that here on Off the Ball. On all our social channels on OTBAM throughout the week, and we will, of course, have reporters at every single Six Nations game here on Off the Ball. All right, quick break, and then we're back with James McLean. Rugby on Off the Ball. With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in. Calling it with Ivan Yates. Throughout the general election campaign, I'm drilling down into each and every one of the constituencies and calling it. 39 constituencies, 39 podcasts. Now available at newstalk.com.